Tereka Sobra Katekira Vosundo Nikori Bokari Vosundi. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to life today. Welcome to a beautiful time in God. Um, on Facebook, what is on with Facebook this morning? We need to go live here. Okay, Facebook is having issues this morning with internet connection. Um, let's check this out. How are we doing on YouTube? Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Harriet. How are you? You've been here nice and early. Thank God for you and your life. Um, how are we doing? Priscilla, good morning. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. We're trying to get back on Facebook. I'm sure we would succeed. Thank you for joining us, Rebecca. Good morning, Rebecca. How are you? Hope your sister or your niece is feeling better. We're praying for her yesterday. Good morning, Lucas. God bless you. How is your beautiful wife? God bless you. Good morning. And we have by Anna. Good morning, by Anna. God bless you, my welcome. Okay, let's go back to Facebook and try to fix this. Um, where do we do this? All right, we have to restore Facebook. Please give me a second as we try to get back on Facebook this morning. I think the internet is not connecting, so we will just restart. Sure, the people on Facebook are wondering, are we on this morning? Some of them must have come on to YouTube by now, I think. Here we go. Okay, so we'll try this now and see how it works. Praise God forevermore. Here we go. We're live on Facebook, so that's good for us. Praise God. Welcome, everybody, on Facebook and on YouTube. Thank you for joining us today. Let us see if we can get this going. Um, there we are. Is there a live stream? There we are. Good. So we can monitor on both sides. Muriel, Mama, good morning. I see you on Facebook. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And God bless you. I think I can do this also. I can, I believe I can share, can I? So bear with me, please. I am learning a lot of things. Okay, there we go. Right. Awesome. Welcome, everyone. Good morning, Sheila. God bless you. Um, Francis, Francis, I knew you jumped from Facebook. You're always the first on Facebook. We're back on Facebook now. So everybody on Facebook, there was an internet issue with Facebook, and um, we couldn't get on, but we're here now. So and monitoring Facebook to make sure everything is going well. All right. Let's pray quickly. It's 6.04. And God is with us, and I'm excited this morning because God is always here with us. So welcome, everybody. Lord Jesus, we give you praise this morning. Thank you for being our Savior, our Lord, the head of the body. Thank you for your blessings that you bring into our lives. Thank you for bringing us back to the Father. Thank you for watching over us through the night, for being our high priest. Thank you for being responsible, for being the bridegroom for watching over the, the bride and making sure that we are spotless. But you present us before God every day without spot, without wrinkle. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, that today we come into your will. We come into the purposes of God for our lives and we access the throne. 
we come by prayer, we come by worship, <clears throat> and we join with the heavens. And we say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, this morning, Father, let it be your will. We submit to your will. We submit to your word. We submit to your ways. We submit to your intentions and your purposes. We recognize we are your body. Therefore, we say, let only your will be done. We ask that you come and take control, guide us by your spirit. You sent your spirit that we may be one with you, that through your spirit we will know your mind and walk in your ways. So, Lord, connect us to that today. Illuminate our understanding, open our minds and our eyes of understanding to see, to hear, to know, and order our steps by your spirit. We give you praise. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to take your place in our lives, your purpose fulfilled in our lives, Glorify the Father through our lives. Let your light shine through us. You are the light of God. You enlighten our darkness. So Spirit of God, have your full ministry today. As we go, we go in union and in submission to you that you will lead us. And as we go, God's name will be glorified. Thank you for victory. Thank you for success. Thank you for power. Thank you for inspiration, for wisdom. Thank you for distinction. Thank you for honor. Thank you for joy. Thank you for all your gifts activated in our lives. We go in the full power of the Holy Spirit with all the gifts and all the fruit of the Holy Spirit manifest and manifesting through our lives. Now have your way. We thank you for this day has been finished already. So as we go into it, we know it is done already. We know we have won, we are victorious. We know that your name is lifted. We know that this month and this week ends with testimony Today, we end with testimony because you are with us. And if you are for us, nothing can be against us. Therefore, we declare that all things today are working for our good, for my good, for their good, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Let's get into it. Hi, David. How are you? Alice, good morning. Florence, how are you today? We stopped at Hebrews chapter 10 yesterday. And we started to look at what the bridge is. And we said the bridge is the body of Christ. The bridge is the body of Christ. Therefore, all, let me put it this way. The bridge is the body. Let's put it there. We said the word became flesh. That word became Jesus. And that body was what carried all the blessing of God, all the grace of God. Edison, good morning. The Musukwa family, good morning. God bless you. So you find, therefore that there's a reason for the body. Let's go back there and see what Jesus said in Hebrews chapter 10. Dalani, good morning, the Mwanza family, Pastor Vuniwe, the Naiwe and Mr. Mwanza, good morning, God bless you all. All right, so Hebrews chapter 10, let's go there. Hebrews chapter 10 from verse one to five, in fact, from verse one to eight. Um, let's read that, okay? It says, for the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the commas thereof perfect. So the law, the Bible, Old Testament cannot make us perfect before God, cannot bring us to be accepted before God. So sacrifice, we said it yesterday, Kennedy echoed that, that sacrifice and offering you would not. Don't forget, he said to Sam, through Samuel to Saul, he says, does God delight in sacrifices? Then he says, obedience is better than sacrifice. See that in chapter 15 of 1 Samuel. And would rather go back to the original. Notice, before there was sacrifice, the first person to offer sacrifice for sin was God. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 20, God was the first to offer sacrifice for sin. Isabel, good morning. And in God doing that, he brought substitution, the law of substitution. So instead of human beings dying, animals and things were sacrificed to cover our sin, the blood. But that wasn't the ideal. God created obedience. He created us for obedience. So when Jesus came, he restored that. So that's what this is saying. He says the blood of animals could not take away the sin. So the sacrifices were offered year by year continually could not make us acceptable to God. He only covered sin. He did not take away sin. Okay? For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because the worshippers once purged should not have any more conscience of sin. 
So when you are born again, you shouldn't have a consciousness of sin. You should have a consciousness of righteousness. So the conscience of sin should go. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sin every year. That's why people keep thinking that, oh, they are not acceptable in God. They have to do this because there's that Old Testament law. You have to always think that, oh, you are not good enough. Your confidence, you remember the prodigal son, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy, so make me a servant and all that. So sin consciousness is a sign that we're not mature in God when all we think about is sin, every time sin, 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 sin. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin of a man. Wherefore, so you see, Jesus was made to take away sin, and when sin is taken away, we are reconciled to God, and then you now become the body of Christ because you are now reconciled. You are now the body God will now use to reach the world. La Monica, good morning. It was so good talking to you yesterday. You're always a blessing. Thank you so much. It says, wherefore, when he came out into the world, that was when Jesus came into the world, verse 5, he said, sacrifice and offering you would not, but a body you have prepared me. Notice in every sacrifice, you don't just pick any, anything on the street. You actually remove the, sacrifice, the sacrificial lamb. You remove it, you prepare it onto the day of sacrifice. So God prepared Jesus. God raised Jesus. God, God fed Jesus. God brought Jesus to the place of the cross. And that is one thing we want to focus on today. If you know your body is the temple of God, how do you work with God? How do you prepare this thing? How do you ensure that you're always, imagine where they say the body is the temple of God. Think about this. You go to church on Sundays, on Wednesdays, on Fridays, on whatever days you go. Do you go worship in dirty places? Do you go worship in very unkept, um, very disorganized places? You find that oftentimes you will hire people or people will volunteer to make sure the sanctuary is perfect for relationship, for worship. It's the same thing. Your body is the temple. It says, a body you have prepared me. Therefore, I must always prepare to meet God in this temple, in this temple. Hey, Jeff, good morning. How are you, my bro? Good to see you. Hey, Mel, how are you? Good to see you, my sister. And Jubilee, good morning. God bless you. So a body you have prepared me. Before you came into the world, before you were born again, God had a plan and a purpose for you. When you are in the kingdom, your success is not in what car you drive, what house you leave. That's the world. And why does the world want to have those things? Because their significance is in things. There's an emptiness. There's a hollow. There's a place that brings that joy, that love, that fulfillment that people don't have. So they feel that it is when they have things that will fill up that gap. So people are pursuing things to give them what God can only satisfy you through the fulfillment of purpose. There is a fulfillment that comes. Good morning, Melando. There's a fulfillment that comes when there's not just ecstasy that comes. When you are in relationship with God, your worship life with God, and seeing God's purpose being fulfilled, the progressive achievement of God's divine purpose for your life, it brings you the greatest satisfaction. It is a life well lived. So please do not measure yourself. In fact, you make the biggest mistake in life when all you do every day is measure yourself to people and trying to live up, no two people have the same purpose. Therefore, there's no basis of comparison. No people, two people have the same biometrics, fingerprints, eye this, blah, blah, blah. Therefore, no two people are the same. So you are the most original of originals. There will never be any like you. There, will be any, there was never before you anybody like you. You are the only one that will ever exist. Your value is beyond compare. It is not what you do that makes you valuable. It is who you are that gives you your worth and your value. There is a place in us that no one can feel. Believe me, nothing can feel it. You only start feeling the truest of joy when you have that relationship with God. Why? You were made for God. You were made for God. You see, look at this. The woman came out of the man. So the man always pursues the woman. And I learned something. 
Stop chasing things. If you keep chasing things, you never catch them because they keep running away. So stop chasing. But you see, there is this love and desire. Why? The woman came out and God brought, took a bone and brought the woman out of the man. The baby came out of the woman. So you see, everything that comes out of you becomes the, the, the focus of your affection and your attention. And that relationship just brings the best. Now, you came out of God. You came out of God. So God's eyes, for God so loved, not the physical world, the human beings, the people that came out of him. So he will do everything to ensure that you are all right, that it's right with you, it's well with you. God so loved. You don't see a woman, it's hardly, it's just rare to see a woman that gave birth to a baby begin to hit the baby. I know our mothers smacked us big time out of love. If they've never snapped, smacked you, you've never lived. I'm telling you the truth. Smacking is one of the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. If they've never smacked you in Africa, I don't know in America, in America, hey, how can they smack you? You have human rights. But in Africa, <laughs> hallelujah, when your mom smacks you, you know there's Jesus. You confess your sins immediately. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you find that what comes out of you, Carolina, good morning, is something you nurture, you cherish, you value. And I want you to know that you came from God. You came out of God. You are the, you are the, you are the attention and the focus of God. You, God is mindful of you. That means God's mind is full of you. And you have a purpose. They do that. Oh, Africa, you should see them. They have skills. When they lay hands on you, you recover. You know, so please understand, never go thinking that you are less. Go knowing you are unique. You are rare. You have so much value that nobody compares to you. Therefore, you, you humiliate yourself and you put yourself down by thinking you want to be like somebody else. The most you can ever be trying to be like somebody else is a cheap copy. Why do you want to be a cheap copy when you are an, a priceless masterpiece? It says you are God's workmanship. You are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus unto good works, Ephesians 2.10. You are God's masterpiece. No two of you, when God made you the mold, he broke. Nobody else can be made like, like that. Nobody else can fulfill your purpose. That's how awesome you are made. Okay? So you find that Jesus said, you made me for one reason. Now, Jesus was made to take away sin. What were you made to do? So we celebrate Jesus. He fulfilled his purpose. But you're a son and daughter of God too. What were you made to take away? What were you made to fulfill? Good morning, Grace. Because when you find, you see, your place of significance is the place of your purpose. Did you see it in Genesis chapter 2? When the woman came to the man, God said, it's not good for man to be alone. Let us make a help suitable for him. A help where masterpieces. And God took, please notice, the woman is not a bone. Look at God took clay and formed clay and made a house for man and put the man inside. The man is not clay until he sinned. Then said, dust thou art to dust you return because the spirit had died. Now, the same way the God took a bone, the woman is not the bone. He created a body and put the woman inside. Okay? And by the way, when you stretch it, I won't confuse you today. When you stretch it, you find that the woman you are seeing in Genesis chapter 2 is still after the order of Adam, not after the order of Jesus. So that woman in the Old Testament is different from the woman in the New Testament. Okay? There are two different women in the Bible. As there are two different Adams, the first and the last Adam. There are two different women in the Bible. The first one is the one after the order, image, and likeness of Adam. And the second woman is the one after the image and likeness of Christ. Okay? The woman in the Old Testament helps to bring forth, to multiply children of Adam. The woman in the New Testament, the body of Christ, 
helps to multiply the children of God. For the children of God to replenish the earth and subdue it with God. So the first woman is a physical woman. The second woman is a spiritual woman. And you call that woman the church, the body of Christ. Okay, good. So he says, a body you have made me to do your will. In sacrifice and offerings for sin, you would not. So God has no pleasure in killing animals every month, every year, every day. In bond offering and sacrifice for sin, you have no pleasure. Then Jesus took the responsibility, leadership. Then said I, in the volume of your books, it is written of me to do your will. You see, God has written you in his book to do his will on the earth. That's why you are the body. So we're focusing on what is the body of Christ today? When we say the body of Christ, what does that mean to you? He says to do his will. So why did God make Jesus the body to do his will? You are here to do God's will. Above all, he said, sacrifice and offering and bond offering for sin, you would not, neither have pleasure therein, wherein are offered by the law. Then said I, lo, I come. So remember Philippians chapter 2. From verse 5, 6, 7, 8, this 7 and 8 now, he humbled himself unto death. This was Jesus' understanding when he was saying, not my will, but your will be done in Gethsemane. This was the understanding Jesus had when he says, not my will, but your will be done. This is Jesus' offering. You see, when you are saved, you didn't give your life to Christ. He chose you. When you come to understanding, and you say, God, not my will, but your will be done. That is when you are giving yourself. You remember how Abraham took Isaac and offered him to God? You remember how Isaac laid there and allowed himself to be the lamb for his father's sacrifice to God? The same way God says, you offer your body a living sacrifice to God. So God will not have a body to operate from. God will not have a temple to, to, to minister from if God doesn't have bodies that were given to him as living sacrifices. When you put it on the altar, it's like a lamb burnt offering to God that God has. You remember when Isaac was laid on the altar, chapter 22, verse 10 of Genesis, when Isaac was laid on the altar, immediately Abraham had no power. Frida, good morning. That's Frida. Yes, yes, that's Frida. Abraham had no power over the lamb anymore. As he lifted up his hand to lay his hand on that, God says, no, that's mine now. Abraham, don't touch the lad. He's no longer your son. He belongs to me now. Don't touch it. I tell you what to do with it. This body is God's now. So when you wake up in the morning, do you offer it to God and say, God, this is your temple. I am now. Therefore, if this is God's temple, it makes you a priest of God in this body. So you, the spirit, are the priest in the body. And in this body, through your heart, you offer spiritual sacrifice unto God. You see that in Hebrews 13, 15. Let us therefore offer unto God continually the sacrifice of praise, spiritual, which is our spiritual worship, the fruit of our lips. So now you and I begin from this altar, not Sunday church, not that building. This is the building God receives worship from. This is the place you have a revelation of God, and through your revelation, you bring an offering unto God. And that offering becomes the thing God receives as incense and sweet, so your prayer and your praise. And that opens the heavens over you. And then God releases wisdom and releases guidance and releases favor and releases direction. And you change the earth by your priestly worship of God. Remember, it started with Abraham. And what did Abraham bring back to us? Worship. The greatest thing Abraham showed us was worship. He restored worship and friendship of God. We lost that in Adam. 
Abraham brought that back. And when that came back, he brought it back covenant. Covenant represents a marriage. And through Moses, God begins to want to restore his covenant and confirm and fulfill his covenant with Abraham. And Jesus came to fulfill that. And you and I come back into covenant relationship, marriage with God. And you are now the female and God is the male. And God leaves that in the operation of the body of Christ. Okay, let's see the operation of the body of Christ. Praise God. So look at that now. Hallelujah. So you find, therefore, that Jesus says, a body you have made me. So when he came, he says, Lord, I come in the volume of books is written on me. He takes, God now takes away the first, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, because it's finished, and he establishes the second covenant. So we have a marriage covenant. So look at this. What are we meant to be? Look at, let's go to um, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So what did Jesus come to do? Verse 17. He says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. So you're a new creation. Spiritually, you are not female. You are not this. You are not that. You are not, you know, your gender constructs your human constructs, your whatever constructs, you're not that. You're a new creation. You're a new creature. All things are passed away. Everything becomes new. And all things are of God. So you now belong to God. Who has reconciled us? So there's no enmity between you and God anymore. We're talking about the body of Christ, which is the bridge. Yesterday we said the body is the bridge between God and the world. Now this body, it says, reconciled us unto God through Christ Jesus. God reconciled us to himself. So you see, God is a lover. The true lover is the one that goes for reconciliation. The one that doesn't love goes for ego. They want to be right. The lover wants to be reconciled. A mature Christian will seek reconciliation. An immature Christian will seek to be right. One is in the flesh, one is in the spirit. The one in the flesh feels like it is defeat for that person to cross and say, let's be reconciled. The one in the spirit finds it easy because of love to cross and say, hey, we are one. We need to be one. The one in the flesh always counts wrongs. The one in the spirit does not see wrong. That person sees relation. I'm talking about God. I'm not talking about you. Stop feeling guilty. I'm talking about God. We were in the flesh. We're running away from God. We're accusing God. God was in the spirit. He was looking for us. Where are you? Where are you? Let me cover you. Let me, let me cover your nakedness. Love covers a multitude of sin. I know you're a sinner. I know you are messed up. But love covers it. Flesh and ego always opens it. Always goes to pick and dig it deep and dig it deep and dig it deep. Flesh always wants to argue who is right, who is wrong, who is right, who is wrong. The spirit covers. He recognizes we are flesh and blood. So he covers. You see, that's why God puts you there. To cover the weakness, the nakedness of communities, of families. We are not there to be their judges. We are there to be Christ. Okay? So it says you're a new creation. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry. We now have the ministry as he is. So sent, Jesus said in John 20, 20, 21, he says, as he sent me, so send I you, isn't it? As he sent me, so send I you. As he is, so are we in the world. You see that? So you find that God, are you okay? God has us in the place that you are the one now to carry his love to the world. Good morning, Lulu. God bless you. And to wit that God was in Christ reconciling. Now, think about this. Is Jesus dead right now? Think about this. Is Christ dead? If Christ is not dead, where is Christ? Let's imagine the living Christ. Where is he? He's in heaven, isn't it? Well, he's alive. He lives to make intercession for us daily. Now, on the earth, where is Christ? 
You see, sometimes when you read the scriptures from the Old Testament perspective, you think it's far away. For example, in the Old Testament, we want God to come down and appear to us. In the New Testament, you don't need God to come down. You can go up into his presence. So you're not waiting for him to come down. You can ascend. He says he has made a way for us that let us come boldly to the throne of grace. So stop waiting for God to come. Thank you, Mel. You got it. So you see, Jesus is the head. He's in heaven. The only way they want to see Jesus now is you. You are the body. You are the body of Christ. You are Christ on the earth. You are the anointed one now. Young, good morning. How are you, young Nikki? God bless you. You are the anointed one now. You are the one that is Christ on the earth. You are the body of Christ. That's who you are. He's the head. You are the body. Don't forget it's spiritual. Stop thinking transformers. Think spiritual. Spiritually, you are the extension and the expression of Christ on the earth. Jesus is on earth. So when you are praying for Jesus to come, it means you don't know he's inside you. It means you don't know you are one with him. It means you don't know who you are. So you think you are outside of him and he needs to come inside of you, but he's there. What you do is worship God because you know God. You are aware of God. You carry a consciousness that there's God. And when you worship God, you feel the presence. You actually feel the divine presence of God because the personality of God responds to your worship. You all are priests. Stop saying I'm not called. It means you don't know who you are in Christ. You're a new creation. You're a new creation. You remember the value of dry bones. Chapter 37 of the book of Genesis of Ezekiel. Chapter 37, book of Ezekiel. Now in that chapter, chapter 37, book of Genesis is Joseph's story. But we're looking at the story of Ezekiel now. Ezekiel saw a valley full of bones. And it says, prophesy over them. Speak my word to them. And it says, the bones started to join. Bone, not, they didn't say bone to bone. It says bone to his, his, his bone. So you and I are joining to Christ. We're taking our place in Christ. We're forming a body. Your Transformer movie can come in now. All the parts are forming. You and I are parts of the body of Christ. We form the parts. Now, what parts you are, I don't know. But I know that there are no two parts that are the same. I have a left hand. I have a right hand. They do different things, but they look like hands. They come together and they do one thing, but they are totally different. Let's see. Even the lines are different, isn't it? Don't go and do some cosmology on my hands, okay? Um, but you see they are different. Every, I'm sure the prints are different. I'm sure everything is different. If I try to scratch my back, where this will reach is different from where that will reach. They do different. Stop trying to be uniform. Unity is not in uniformity. Unity is actually in appreciating our diversity. If we have two of the same, one is not necessary. That's why we can never have two of the same. Therefore, if I think I don't need you, I'm not part of the body. I don't discern the body. If you think you don't need me, if you compete with me, does the teeth compete with the tongue? Even though they bite at times, they are covenant. You know what connects this whole body? What connects my whole body and makes it this good? Hallelujah. <laughs> What connects this whole body is blood. Blood. Blood carries life. And through the blood, this whole body is, is nourished, is cherished, is all that because of what I feed on and the blood carries life. So what my body is in covenant relationship with itself. Praise God. Isabel says, I'm the extension expression of Christ. Absolutely. Praying in Jesus comes in me is Absolutely. So you find that if this body is connected by blood, 1 Corinthians, I'm going to look at that. We're looking at the mystery of the church. We're looking at the body of Christ. We're looking at the bridge. So that's the subject. Don't forget, this month is leadership training. So everything I'm telling you is not kindergarten stuff, is leadership stuff, spiritual leadership. 
And if you don't have it in your churches, go teach them in your churches. But more importantly, it's not about teaching, it's about expression. Go and be the leader, be the light. Why you are made. So this month is spiritual emphasis is on leadership, spiritual leadership development. So we want to understand what is the church? What is the body of Christ? How does it work? So if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 12, he says, We are but as the blood carries life and makes this body one and gives life to it and keeps the body going. And that's why you have the heart. The heart is, you see, the important thing is not your heart. The important thing is the blood. So the blood, the heart is the pump to make sure that the blood is sending life. So when the heart starts pump, stops pumping, we die. Why? Because no life is being pumped anymore. So the body can't sustain itself because there's no life, because the heart, the pump has stopped. Therefore, the life has stopped. That is why they can put an artificial heart there and you are still living. They take away this one and they put an operation. What is important is the function. What is important is the blood is still moving. It's the same way if the life is in the blood for a physical body, the life is in the spirit for a spiritual body. So when the spirit stops moving, we die. That's why we died in Genesis because the spirit stopped. Then God says, you are now a living soul. You are dust. The spirit has died. You are dust. Then when Jesus came by him, we got spiritually alive. So your body receives, a, look at Job chapter 33. Please understand. I hope what I'm saying is making sense to you. In Job 33 verse 4, look at Job 33 verse 4. This is the scripture that keeps me alive. This is my health scripture. This is my, John, good morning. Kafue, good morning. How are you? So you find that this is my health scripture. Look at what it says in verse 3. My word shall be of uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge. Then he gave us the secret, just like blood is to your body. The spirit of God has made me. The breath, breath means, Jeff will tell you, Roach Elohim. The breath of the Almighty giveth me life. So notice, I now start getting my life source. We said Father, Abba Father is number one, source, number two, sustainer. So when I get born again, God now sends the Holy Spirit into me to be my sustainer, my life source. So if my physical body is weak, is sick, my spirit will bring life and health to the physical body and the physical body will respond. Just like he breathed life, spirit into clay and clay started to have heartbeat. So God breathed and that breath begins to sustain your body. Faith is the connector. So when you don't understand that, but Anne, how are you? Hey, you're on Facebook today. Good morning. When you don't understand this, you will be going to do blood test, blood sample. They want to see what's killing you. Spiritually, you want to check what spirit is affecting you. That's why I say, oh, there's a curse. There's a this. Because that problem is not caused by your food and the soil. It's caused by the spirit. There's a spirit contaminating your body that is making your body. So judgment day is on the 29th. When you come and break the yoke, you cannot spoil a strong man's house until you bind the strong man. So when you deal with that strong man, it releases the body and the body is returned back to normal because the virus, the evil spirit, the sickness spirit, the disease spirit, you can't see it on that telescope, but that thing has been broken. And because Christ, has redeemed you from the curse of the law. The spirit of death, the spirit of sickness has no power to latch on you anymore. So you can resist it. That's how you maintain health. That's how you maintain progress. So when you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't have a prayer life. You don't speak in tongues as you ought to, as much as you ought to. You don't generate the power of God in you because you think it's for Sunday 10 to 12. 
then your life is lopsided. You don't know what to do. You are cut off from the times and the seasons. You are stranded in life because you don't understand your spirit. And you don't know your relationship with the Holy Ghost. The same way the blood has relationship with the body to keep it alive and healthy and growing is the same way you as a spirit have a relationship with the Holy Spirit to keep you alive, healthy, and growing. It says, if the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, from Romans 8, 11 to 13, the same Spirit will quicken, make alive your mortal body, energize, vitalize your mortal bodies. Now, if it can vitalize your mortal bodies, don't you think it can vitalize your mind? Don't you think it can open your understanding to give you innovative concepts? You are the body of Christ. Did you notice Jesus was always ahead of the game? He was always ahead of every challenge because he had the spirit of God. You may not be in the future, but the Holy Ghost is in the future. God is in your future. Therefore, you can enter your future through your relationship. As, is somebody getting this this morning? You are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Who's hearing me today? Lucas, are you there? You are the body of Christ. It's making sense. Thank God, Rebecca. You are never stranded. You are better than the sons of Issachar that understood the times. He will show you things to come. So your future can be known. You don't need a prophet to prophesy. You carry the spirit of prophecy in you. You are one. Mel is hearing. Thank you, Jesus. You are the body of Christ. Your life is in the spirit. So he tells you, in, in, he tells you where is that? He says, walk in the spirit. Isabel, you're hearing, thank God. Walk in the spirit. Don't walk in the flesh. Don't walk in the limitation of your mind. Walk in the spirit. A more sure word, absolutely. That's what you have. And you will hear that word in your heart. For the kingdom of heaven is not outside. The kingdom of heaven is inside. So when you say thy kingdom come, it comes from inside of you, outside into your world. You birth the kingdom now. Because you hear it, you see it, and you can release it. That's who we are. So you want to understand what we said. You see the books of the Old Testament are revealing you from the worshiper to the prophet, to the priest, to the judge, to the king. To, it's revealing you. It's putting all your parts together onto Jesus, the servant, that you are now seeing yourself as a gift to the world. But in that gift, being a gift to the world, you have to grow. So let's pick up this. Let's pick up. So we're back in 1 Corinthians chapter. Is this coming home? Is this coming home? Do you understand the body of Christ? I'm happy you're getting the grace. You must understand. Where's, that, where's the gap? Let's see the gap, okay? So if anybody is in Christ, the new creation, all things are passed away. Everything becomes new. You are no longer like human being. No, you're a supernatural being now. You're a spirit being now. You have an earthly experience, but you're a spirit being. I've not seen memes today. It's memes here. Hi, memes. Are you there? Praise God. Now, look at 2 Corinthians, isn't it? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It says, if any man be in Christ, a new creation, 517, and it takes you up to, and you say you're ambassadors now. So you're not a spirit being on assignment on the earth. That's why you're an ambassador. Verse, what's that? It says he has made us ambassadors. Verse 20, and we are to go into the world to reconcile the world to God, not to judge the world. You're not a judge. He says, he says, let me read 20 to you. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. So notice, he's not here. You're operating for him. That's why he gave you his name. You're ambassadors for Christ. So is Christ on the earth doing his work? Yes, through me and you. You're ambassadors for Christ. Just like the angels minister for you. You are there for Christ. So when you are laying hands, it is Christ laying hands. He is the Savior. If you go in your power, you'll say, how can I do it? Hey, I've not prayed. I've not fasted. But when you understand you as the body of Christ, when you go, it is Christ that is going. 
When they have seen Jesus, they've seen the Father. When they have seen you, they have seen Christ. Good morning, Yvonne. Bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. I was looking for you. Thank God. So, you want to understand that. That you are valuable. You are not ordinary. The reason you haven't done it is because you don't believe who you are. You don't even know who you are. So you are waiting for service when you are the one to give service. You see, if you have a Toyota problem, you take it to Toyota. If you have, if you have um, 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 a Rolls Royce problem, you go to Rolls Royce. If you have a phone problem, it's an iPhone, you take it to Apple. If it's a Samsung, you take it to Samsung. If you have a life problem, a human problem, they should bring them to you because you are God on the earth. They were made by God. You are the one. You are the approved, accredited technician of God to bring salvation to your world. That's you. What's the gap? Let's check the gap. So you are the one to look at how you are prayed. We pray you um, and Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be you reconciled to God. So you are now operating in Christ's stead. Instead of Christ, you are the one. That's you, the body. And God doesn't want this body. Let me say something. God doesn't want this body in a Sunday service. God wants this body in the schools to take care of the children, to bring God into the children. Let there be light. Let there be God. So you are the one carrying light, God. Let your light shine. What the world needs is light, God. Let your light shine. Consult me, make a, that, exactly. That's who we are. You are what? You see, once you can have the mind of God, is God operating. And through the Holy Spirit, it says you have the mind of Christ. So you can operate as God will operate part time. If you can see artificial intelligence and understand artificial intelligence, then why can't you understand spiritual intelligence? Why are you thinking spiritual things, thinking like human beings? If you can see that artificial intelligence can do far more than the human being, who tells you you with spiritual intelligence doesn't do far more than the regular human being? Who tells you you can know far more and operate far more? Can you imagine? If you had spiritual intelligence in your parliament, in your senate, in your hospitals, yes, the, the MRI cannot detect this thing, but the Holy Ghost can tell you and you can heal that thing. Who says you only need God in a service on Sunday? You need God in medicine. You need God in, in, in what's the new thing they do for? There be light. That's what God said. And to achieve light, he created us to carry the light. So from Genesis verse 2, the whole intention was let there be light. The rest of it from verse 4 down is to ensure there is light. When light was made, then it says go and have dominion over darkness. Do you understand Genesis? It's telling you God's plan and intention in one chapter. Then the execution starts from Genesis chapter 2. And the whole idea is, let there be light. Let there be God. And you are the light bearer. You are the body. You are the one carrying the light. You are the giver of light. And light is God. And God is you and in you. Good. So he says, you are in Christ's stead, for he has made him that knew no sin, that we, you and me, can become the righteousness of God. So look at 29 now. So one, he says, you are new creations in Christ. And what are we meant to be? Look at where are we going? Romans chapter 8, 29. Romans chapter 8, I give you about your healing from 11 to 13, and you read from your sonship from 14 to 17. Now look at who you are, um, who, what God's intent for you. Romans 8, 28, start from 28. And we know that all things work together for good for them that are called, loved of God, who he called according to his purpose. So why are you here? You are called according to God's purpose. You are here on purpose. You are not a mistake. You are here on purpose. 29. For whom he did foreknow, he knew you before you were born. 
before you got born again. He did predestinate. He predetermined. You remember um, Ephesians 2.10. He says, you are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which he predetermined before. Okay? So it's the same thing this is saying here. And the same writer, isn't it? Good. So it says, he's predetermined for you to be conformed to the image of his son. So what is God's plan for you? God's plan for you is not to have, thank you, Lucas, I see it. God's plan for you is not to have a big car, a big house, a big this, a big that. God's plan for you is to be conformed to the image of Christ, for you to become Christ. And we're talking spiritual, 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 to be conformed to the image of Christ, that he, Jesus, might now be the firstborn amongst many brethren. So God's purpose is for you to be conformed now, what brings you to that conformity? So when God says, be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed, God is saying, be you conformed to Christ. Be that new creation. Change your spiritual mind and be conformed to Christ. Does it make sense? Now, how do I get to this? How do I get conformed to the image of Christ? Ephesians then, chapter 4. This is what your Sunday church is. The fivefold ministry. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, is to build you up to Christ. So if you don't see mature Christ, the body of Christ functioning on the earth, and you only see them gathering on Sunday, is because the fivefold ministry haven't done their job. Pastor, I'm glad that I know we praise God. We praise God. We praise God. Young Nikki, God bless you. Now look at this. We give God all the praise for that. Now look at this. Where are we? Ephesians chapter 4. Start from verse 11. He gave gifts unto men. Some apostles, pastors, teachers, all that. For what? For the perfecting of the saints. So my job is to build. You see, Paul says we are master builders. What are we doing? We are building up. That's in chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. You see that in chapter 2 Corinthians as well. So we are master builders. We are meant, I will read that to you. We are meant to build the body of Christ. As God gave Bezalel a holy up to Moses, to build the temple, God gave apostles, evangelists, prophets, pastors, teachers to Jesus to build the body of Christ. So God is not interested in your physical buildings because Paul told us that God will not stay. The living God will not stay, Acts chapter 17, does not live in temples built with hands, built with clay, built with brick and mortar. God does not live there. God lives in this temple. So he says he gave us for the perfecting of saints, for the, for the building up of the body of Christ, until we all come to the unity of faith, to knowledge of God. So what builds me up? The knowledge of the Son of God. And we come into a mature man, and we grow to the full measure of the, that's in verse 13, the full measure of stature of fullness of God. So when you grow in knowledge, the more you grow in knowledge, the more redeemed your body is to be offered to God to use. We are the body, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians really helps chapter 1. It helps the body to understand itself. Ephesians is your spiritual warfare book in the Bible. New Testament. Ephesians is your spiritual warfare book in the Bible. So you want to understand Ephesians. Look at chapter 1. Go up to verse 21, 22 there. It says, far above all principles, he has placed us to be far above all principles, dominion, all that. And then he has put all things under his feet. He has put all things under his feet and gave the head over all things on the earth to the church, which is the body of Christ. That's the fullness of him. So the body of Christ is the fullness of Christ, and it is meant to fill all. Notice, it is not meant to fill pews in church. It's not meant to fill seats. Because our assignment nowadays, we think our assignment is to fill seats. Your assignment is not to fill seats. It's to fill all. It's to fill business. It's to fill politics. It's to fill, because if you don't fill it, the kingdom of darkness will fill it. Then don't complain about your country, because you are not seated there. We are meant to feel medicine. You are meant to feel healthcare, Medicare. You are meant to feel engineering. You are meant to feel technology. You are meant to feel this. The, the, the lie of the devil is you say all those things are kingdom of darkness. Then you run into your small cave called church and you're thinking you are relevant to society waiting to go to heaven. Meanwhile, God says, let there be light in all those places. 
We are not going to take physical territory anymore. We are taking business territories. We are taking innovative territories. We are becoming light in those areas. We are meant to feel all in all. Therefore, the church is to build you for your relevance and significance in the world. And your significance comes when you meet your purpose. It will be foolish of me to begin to compete with somebody to have a church of 20 million people in one center. No, that's not my assignment. My assignment is to take each person and build their minds and send them away to go and become what God called them to be. So my success is not in me being big, it's me seeing all of you big. Because that's my job. I'm a school teacher. The apostles build. We build human beings. What Toyota does to cars and metal is what we do to spiritual beings. So my success is your success. Not me celebrating 20,000 days. It's you celebrating because you've met your purpose and our community is transforming and our nations are transforming. Then I can go to God and say, I've done my job. Look at Zambia, God. Look at Africa, God. Look at what your children are doing there, God. Thank you. Such a privilege to be a servant. And you close shop and you go to heaven because you finished your job. Not that you escaped. You finished your assignment and you left. How many of you will leave for something? When Adam saw Eve, Eve was made for Adam. That's the first one. Not Don't tell me wives are made for Stop that. You know what I'm saying. So when that woman came to meet Adam, Adam was her purpose. So when Adam saw Eve, he gave her significance because he was the solution to that challenge he had. You have the, when you meet your purpose, your significance, stop looking for significance, trying to be head of choir, head of this, head of that. That's not where your significance is. Throw that away. Stop belittling yourself. Your significance is when you meet the purpose for which you are made. When I go to Mutendere or to Choma, or to, is Apostle Joshua here? Or to, I know Mama is here. If you go to Samfia, then that's my significance. Because I'm meeting the reason I was made, and it is only the people you were made for that will see you valuable. The people that don't know who you are, don't, you, you don't meet their life. You're not part of their life. You don't bring anything to their life. They'll make you feel you are nothing. It's not because you are nothing. It's because you're in the wrong place. You're talking to the wrong people. You're begging them to like you. You're trying to make them think you're important. No, they will stone you. Paul kept going to the Jews. They kept stoning him to death because that's not his place. When he went to the Gentiles, when he came to me, we embraced him. It's time to pray. You are the body of Christ. We'll continue from here on Monday. I hope the Holy Spirit gives us that, but we'll continue on Monday. I hope this is coming home. You are the body of Christ. You were made to be conformed, not to the image of your bishop. Stop trying to be like your bishop. Be like Christ, to be conformed to the image of Christ. And then the Christ in you that is built up becomes the savior of the world around you. And then they can see God. Stacy, good morning. God bless you. And when they've seen you, they see the solutions of God. They see the blessing of God. They see the hand of God. They see the favor of God because you are the body of God taking it to them. Your worship life. We'll start looking at that from, to, from Monday. Your worship life will determine your warfare life. Your worship life is your horizontal with God. Your warfare is your vertical. Sorry, your worship is your vertical. Your warfare is your horizontal in the physical world. Are we ready to do this? That's right. We thank God for the word. We thank the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you. Please thank him this morning. Thank you. Thank you for the next two minutes and more minutes as you finish. Thank God that he made you. He chose you. He chose you. What a joy that God chose you. He predetermined you. It's not your university that gives you your purpose. You were born with it. The day you were born again, he gave birth to you with significance. As you grow and mature in God, you, you catch a revelation of who you are. 
You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are so unique. There's nobody like you. Just like there's no one like Jesus. There's no one like you. No one will ever compare. And he has put you in Christ. You are complete in him. You are complete. You lack nothing. Because the spirit of God is your life. The spirit of God is your wisdom. The spirit of God is your understanding. The spirit of God is your light. The spirit of God is your help. You walk by the leading of the Holy Ghost. You are connected to the wisest mind in the world. The, the most intelligent mind in the world you carry. Your potential is unlimited because you are made in the image and likeness of God. He is your Abba Father. He is your sustainer. He sustains you by his spirit. He sustains you by his word. He sustains you by his grace. You are accounted for. You cannot be sick. Sickness leaves you now because sickness cannot stay in darkness. So you begin to evict it. You command it to leave because it cannot stay. You are the voice of God. You are the voice of the prophet, the spirit of prophecy in you, but you are the voice of prophecy because God uses your mouth to declare the future in your business, in the marketplace, in medical field, in your communities. God will use you as the prophetic voice to bring your community into their future. You are the leader to bring transformation and God will bless you. Father, we go in your name now, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. 701, I have to stop. Hallelujah. Today has been explosive, has it? I think God has been wonderful to us. Go and express yourself this weekend. Go and with liberty, express yourself. You have value, you have worth. Go and be a blessing. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. And through you, his grace will go into the world. His eyes will lead you and bring you back. By his spirit, you prosper this weekend. In Jesus' name, amen. Go and be blessed. We love you guys. God loves you so much more. And we will see you on Monday morning. Make sure you go to service. Have a good service on Sunday. Learn and go and express it. God bless you. Bye-bye, Isabel and everybody on Facebook. See you. And on YouTube, God bless you all. See you tomorrow. See you on Monday. Bye-bye.